Lesson 1, Grocery Shopping Tips Hey Anna, have you tried comparing prices at different supermarkets for groceries? Hi John. Yes, I always do that. It's a great way to save money. Absolutely. Which supermarket do you find has the best prices? Well, it depends on the item. For fresh produce, I usually go to the local farmer's market. Ah, good idea. What about pantry staples like rice or pasta? I found that discount stores often have lower prices for those. Interesting. I'll have to check them out. What about meat and seafood? I usually go to a butcher shop for meat and a fish market for seafood. They tend to have better quality and prices. That's good to know. I'll keep that in mind. Any other tips for grocery shopping? Don't forget to compare unit prices. Sometimes, a larger package is actually more cost-effective. Ah, uh, I see. That's a useful tip. Thanks for sharing. Lesson 2, Travel Accommodation Options Hi Anna, have you considered staying in hotels or hostels when traveling? Hi John. Yes, I've tried both options. It really depends on the trip and my budget. I see. What do you find convenient about staying in hotels? Hotels usually provide more amenities like room service and a gym. It's great for a comfortable stay. That sounds nice. How about the cost? Are hotels generally more expensive? Yes, hotels can be expensive, especially in popular tourist destinations. But sometimes, you can find good deals online. That's good to know. What about hostels? Are they a good option too? Absolutely. Hostels are great for budget travelers. They offer shared dormitory-style rooms and common areas to socialize. Interesting. Are there any downsides to staying in hostels? Well, you might have to share a room with strangers, and the facilities may not be as luxurious as hotels. I see. It's a trade-off between cost and comfort. Are there any other accommodation options? Yes, there are also vacation rentals like apartments or houses. They can be a good choice for larger groups or longer stays. That's a good point. I'll consider that for my next trip. Thanks for the information. Lesson 3, Beach Essentials Hi Anna, have you seen those beach umbrellas and chairs? They sound perfect for the beach. Where can we find them? Hi John. Yes, they're great for providing shade and relaxation. You can find them at beach equipment rental shops. That's convenient. Are they usually available for rent at most beaches? Yes, many popular beaches have rental services nearby. 
They usually offer umbrellas, chairs, and even beach towels. That's good to know. What about the prices? Are they affordable? The prices vary depending on the location and the duration of the rental. It's best to check with the rental shop for specific rates. I see. It's worth it for a comfortable day at the beach. What other beach essentials should we consider? Don't forget sunscreen. It's crucial to protect your skin from the sun's harmful rays. You can find it at any convenience store or pharmacy. Absolutely. Sunscreen is a must-have. Anything else we should bring? It's a good idea to bring a beach towel, a hat, and sunglasses for added comfort and sun protection. Great suggestions. I'll make sure to pack those. Thanks. Lesson 4. Prioritizing Safety Hi Anna, when it comes to safety, it should not be taken lightly. Absolutely, it's better to be safe than sorry. Hi John. I couldn't agree more. Safety should always be a top priority, no matter the situation. Definitely. What are some precautions we can take to ensure our safety? One important precaution is to always lock our doors and windows at home. It helps to prevent break-ins. That's a good point. What about personal safety when we're out and about? We should be aware of our surroundings and avoid walking alone in unfamiliar or poorly lit areas, especially at night. Wise advice. Are there any safety measures we should consider while traveling? Yes, it's important to keep our valuables secure and be cautious of pickpockets in crowded tourist areas. I see. Safety is crucial both at home and when traveling. Any other safety tips you can share? It's a good idea to have emergency contacts saved in our phones and to familiarize ourselves with the local emergency services. That's a smart move. Being prepared can make a big difference in case of an emergency. Thanks for sharing. Lesson 5. Cleaning Supplies Hi Anna, we need some soap and sponges for cleaning. I'll get the soap while you grab some sponges. Hi John. Sounds like a plan. I'll head to the store and pick up a few sponges. Great. I'll make sure we have enough soap for the cleaning tasks ahead. It's always good to have a variety of sponges for different cleaning purposes. I'll choose a few different types. That's a good idea. We can use one sponge for dishes and another for cleaning surfaces. Exactly. It's important to keep them separate to maintain hygiene and prevent cross-contamination. Agreed. We should also consider the material of the sponge. Some are more suitable for delicate surfaces. Absolutely. Soft sponges or microfiber cloths work well for sensitive areas like glass or electronics. Good point. 
We don't want to accidentally scratch or damage anything while cleaning. And when it comes to soap, we should choose one that is effective yet gentle on our hands and the surfaces we're cleaning. Yes, finding a balanced soap that cuts through grease and grime without being too harsh is key. I'll look for a multi-purpose soap that can be used for various cleaning tasks around the house. Perfect. Let's meet back at home and start our cleaning session with our new supplies. Sounds like a plan. Let's make our home sparkle and shine. Indeed. It's time to tackle those cleaning tasks with our new soap and sponges. Lesson 6. Financial Management Hi Anna, I've been thinking about our finances lately. It's never too late to start managing our money better. Hi John. You're absolutely right. Taking control of our finances is important for a secure future. I agree. Do you have any tips on how we can improve our financial management? One key step is creating a budget. It helps us track our income and expenses, allowing us to make informed financial decisions. That makes sense. How can we ensure we stick to our budget? We can set financial goals and prioritize our spending accordingly. It's important to avoid unnecessary expenses and focus on saving. Good point. Speaking of saving, what are some strategies we can use to save more effectively? We can automate our savings by setting up automatic transfers to a separate savings account each month. Automation sounds like a smart idea. It takes away the temptation to spend the money before saving it. Exactly. Another strategy is to cut back on non-essential expenses. Small changes can add up to significant savings over time. I'll keep that in mind. Are there any other aspects of financial management we should consider? It's important to stay informed about personal finance. Reading books or articles, attending workshops, or consulting with financial advisors can help us make better financial decisions. That's great advice. Financial education is crucial for long-term success. I'm motivated to take better control of our finances. I'm glad to hear that. Good luck on your financial management journey. Thank you. Let's work together to achieve our financial goals and secure a brighter future. Lesson 7, Sun Protection Hi Anna, it's a sunny day today. That's smart, I usually bring an umbrella for some extra shade. Hi John. That's a clever idea. Sun protection is important to prevent sunburn and long-term skin damage. Absolutely. What are some other ways we can protect ourselves from the sun's harmful rays? Wearing sunscreen with a high SPF is crucial. It helps to shield our skin from harmful UV radiation. Good point. Should we apply sunscreen only when we're at the beach or all the time? Sunscreen should be a part of our daily routine, even on cloudy or cooler days. 
UV rays can still penetrate through clouds. I didn't realize that. Are there any specific areas we should pay extra attention to when applying sunscreen? We should remember to apply sunscreen to often overlooked areas like our ears, neck, and the back of our hands. I'll keep that in mind. What about protective clothing? Does it play a role in sun protection? Absolutely. Wearing wide-brimmed hats, sunglasses with UV protection, and lightweight, long-sleeved clothing can provide additional protection. That's good to know. I'll make sure to incorporate those items into my summer wardrobe. It's great to be proactive about sun protection. It helps to reduce the risk of skin damage and skin cancer. I couldn't agree more. Protecting our skin should be a priority. Thanks for sharing these sun safety tips. Lesson 8, Fitness Routine Hi Anna, how long do you run for? I usually run for about 30 minutes each time. Hi John. That's great. Running is an excellent way to improve cardiovascular fitness. I usually aim for a similar duration. That's impressive. How many days a week do you incorporate running into your fitness routine? I try to run three to four times a week to maintain consistency and allow for proper rest and recovery. Consistency is key. I've been thinking about adding some variety to my workouts. Any suggestions? Cross-training is a great way to mix things up. You can try activities like cycling, swimming, or strength training on alternate days. Those sound like fun alternatives. What are the benefits of cross-training? Cross-training helps to work different muscle groups, prevents overuse injuries, and improves overall fitness and strength. I see the value in that. How do you stay motivated to stick to your fitness routine? Setting specific goals and tracking progress can be motivating. It's also helpful to find a workout buddy or join group fitness classes. Good point. Having a support system can make exercise more enjoyable. Do you have any other fitness tips? It's important to listen to your body and prioritize rest days. Getting enough sleep and staying hydrated are also crucial for recovery. I'll keep those tips in mind. Thank you for sharing your insights. I'm excited to enhance my fitness routine. Lesson 9, Financial Stability Hi Anna, I've been thinking about long-term strategies like saving and budgeting. They can ensure financial stability. Hi John. You're absolutely right. Implementing those strategies is crucial for a secure future and peace of mind. I agree. What are some tips you have for saving money effectively? One tip is to automate your savings by setting up automatic transfers to a separate account each month. Automation sounds convenient. It takes away the temptation to spend the money before saving it. 
Exactly. Another tip is to cut back on non-essential expenses. Small changes can add up to significant savings over time. That makes sense. How can we create a budget to track our income and expenses? We can start by listing all our sources of income and then tracking our monthly expenses, categorizing them into essentials and non-essentials. That's a good starting point. How can we ensure we stick to our budget? It's important to set financial goals and prioritize our spending accordingly. Avoiding unnecessary expenses and focusing on saving can help. I'll keep that in mind. Are there any other strategies we should consider for financial stability? Staying informed about personal finance is crucial. Reading books or articles, attending workshops, or consulting with financial advisors can help us make better decisions. That's great advice. Financial education is key to long-term success. I'm motivated to take control of our finances. I'm glad to hear that. Let's work together to achieve financial stability and a brighter future. Thank you. Here's to smart financial strategies that pave the way for a more secure and prosperous life. Lesson 10, Composting Benefits Hi Anna, have you tried composting food waste? I've heard it has several environmental benefits. Hi John. Not yet, but I'm planning to start. Composting can significantly reduce waste and benefit the soil in our gardens. That sounds interesting. How does composting work exactly? Composting involves collecting organic waste like fruit peels, vegetable scraps, and coffee grounds, and allowing them to decompose naturally. So, instead of throwing away those food scraps, we can turn them into nutrient-rich compost for our plants? Exactly. The compost acts as a natural fertilizer, enriching the soil and promoting healthy plant growth. That's amazing. Are there any specific items we should avoid composting? Yes, it's best to avoid adding meat, dairy products, and oily foods to the compost pile as they can attract pests. I'll keep that in mind. Does composting require a lot of space or special equipment? Not necessarily. You can start with a small compost bin in your backyard or even use a composting system designed for apartments or small spaces. That's convenient. Are there any tips for maintaining a healthy compost pile? It's important to balance the green materials, like food scraps, with brown materials, like dry leaves or shredded paper, to ensure proper decomposition. I see. How long does it take for the composting process to complete? It can take anywhere from a few months to a year, depending on factors like temperature, moisture, and the size of the compost pile. Patience is key, then. I'm excited to start composting and contribute to a greener environment. That's wonderful. Composting is a simple yet impactful way to reduce waste and nurture our gardens. Let's get started.
Thank you. Here's to embracing composting and making a positive difference for our planet. Lesson 11, Creating a Reward System Hi Anna, have you ever thought about creating a reward system to stay motivated and achieve your goals? Hi John. Yes, I believe a reward system can be a great way to keep ourselves motivated. Have you tried it? Not yet, but I'm considering it. What are some ways we can implement a reward system? One idea is to set milestones for our goals and reward ourselves when we reach them. It could be something small but enjoyable. That sounds like a good approach. What are some examples of rewards we can give ourselves? It could be treating ourselves to a favorite meal, buying a new book or gadget, or even planning a weekend getaway as a larger reward. Those sound like great incentives. How can we make sure our reward system is effective? It's important to choose rewards that truly motivate us and align with our values and interests. Customizing the system to our preferences is key. Customization makes sense. Should we set specific rules or guidelines for earning rewards? Yes, setting clear criteria for earning rewards can make the system more structured and help us stay focused on our goals. I see the value in that. How often should we reward ourselves? It depends on the nature of our goals and milestones. Small rewards can be given more frequently, while larger rewards can be reserved for bigger achievements. That's a good approach. Are there any potential drawbacks to be aware of with a reward system? Sometimes, if we become too focused on the rewards, we may lose sight of the intrinsic value of our goals. It's important to find a balance. Balance is key, indeed. I'm excited to implement a reward system and make my journey towards achieving goals more enjoyable. That's great. Rewarding ourselves along the way can make the process more fun and fulfilling. Here's to your success. Thank you. Here's to embracing a reward system and celebrating our accomplishments along the way. Lesson 12, Making Pizza Hi Anna, I've been craving homemade pizza lately. What toppings do you think we should add? Hi John. Agreed, homemade pizza sounds delicious. Don't forget the cheese too. Of course, should we add vegetables as well? Absolutely. How about some sliced bell peppers and mushrooms? They add great flavor and texture. That sounds perfect. We can also add some fresh basil leaves for a pop of freshness. Great idea. And maybe we can sprinkle some red pepper flakes for a hint of spiciness. I like that. Shall we make the pizza dough from scratch or by pre-made dough? Let's try making the dough ourselves. It'll be a fun and satisfying process. I'm up for the challenge. Do we have all the ingredients for the dough, like flour and yeast? 
Yes, we do. We'll also need warm water and a pinch of salt to complete the dough recipe. Wonderful. Once the dough is ready, we can roll it out and shape it into a round pizza crust. And then we can spread a layer of tomato sauce on the crust before adding our toppings. Perfect. After that, we'll sprinkle a generous amount of cheese on top and then arrange the vegetables. Sounds delicious already. Finally, we'll bake the pizza in the oven until the crust is golden and the cheese is melted. I can't wait to enjoy our homemade pizza. It's going to be a tasty treat. It sure will be. Let's get started on making the dough. I'll gather the ingredients, and you can preheat the oven. Sounds like a plan. Let's make a mouth-watering pizza that we'll both enjoy. Absolutely. Here's to a fun and flavorful pizza-making adventure. Lesson 13, Natural Skin Care Hey, have you ever considered using natural skin care products? I've heard they can be beneficial for our skin. Hi John. Yes, I've been using natural products for a while now. They can be gentler on the skin and free from harmful chemicals. That's interesting. What are some examples of natural skin care products we can incorporate into our routine? There are many options. We can use natural oils like coconut oil or jojoba oil as moisturizers, and aloe vera gel for soothing the skin. Those sound like simple yet effective choices. What about cleansers and exfoliators? We can opt for cleansers made with natural ingredients like tea tree oil or chamomile extract. For exfoliation, a homemade scrub with sugar or coffee grounds works well. I see. Are there any natural remedies for specific skin concerns, like acne or dryness? Definitely. Tea tree oil has antibacterial properties that can help with acne, while honey and avocado are great for hydrating dry skin. I'll keep those in mind. Are natural skin care products easily accessible? Yes, many brands offer natural and organic options. And we can also make our own DIY products using ingredients from our kitchen. That's convenient. Are there any precautions we should take when using natural skin care products? It's always a good idea to patch test new products to check for any allergic reactions. Also, be mindful of expiration dates for homemade products. Good to know. Are there any specific benefits you've noticed since switching to natural skin care? Personally, I've noticed that my skin feels healthier and more balanced. Natural products can help improve the overall appearance and texture of the skin. Those are great incentives to give natural skin care a try. I'll definitely explore this option further. That's wonderful. Taking care of our skin with natural products is a nurturing and mindful approach. Here's to healthy skin. Thank you. Here's to embracing natural skin care and reaping the benefits for our skin. 
Lesson 14, Exploring Vibrant Colors Hi Anna, I've been in a colorful mood lately. I like vibrant colors, so I'll be looking for something colorful. Any suggestions? Hi John. That sounds exciting. If you want to incorporate vibrant colors into your wardrobe, you could try adding statement pieces like a bright blouse or a colorful scarf. That's a great idea. I'll definitely look for some eye-catching pieces to enhance my outfits. What about accessories? Accessories are a fantastic way to add pops of color. You can try colorful earrings, a bold watch, or even a vibrant belt to liven up your look. I like the idea of using accessories to make a statement. Are there any specific colors that you find particularly vibrant? It depends on personal preferences, but colors like red, yellow, royal blue, and emerald green are often considered vibrant and attention-grabbing. Those are some striking colors. I'll keep them in mind while shopping. What about home decor? Any suggestions for adding vibrant colors to my living space? Absolutely. You can incorporate vibrant colors through pillows, rugs, or even artwork. Consider adding a colorful accent wall or painting to create a focal point in the room. That's a great way to bring energy into my living space. I'll explore different options for adding vibrant colors to my home. Any other ideas? If you enjoy gardening, planting colorful flowers or adding vibrant pots can bring a burst of color to your outdoor space. That's a fantastic suggestion. I'll work on creating a colorful garden to enjoy. Vibrant colors can really uplift the mood. Thank you. Lesson 15, Online Shopping Hi Anna, have you ever tried shopping online? I've heard it can be slightly cheaper online. That's good to know. How about you? Hi John. Yes, I've done quite a bit of online shopping. It's convenient and offers a wider range of options. Plus, you can often find better deals and discounts. That's great to hear. Are there any specific websites or platforms you recommend for online shopping? There are plenty of popular online marketplaces like Amazon and eBay that offer a wide variety of products. Additionally, many brands have their own online stores with exclusive deals. I'll check those out. Are there any precautions we should take when shopping online? Absolutely. It's important to shop from reputable websites to ensure secure transactions and protect your personal information. Reading customer reviews can also help gauge the quality of products. That's good advice. How about returns and exchanges? Are they easy to process when shopping online? Returns and exchanges vary depending on the website or store policy. It's essential to review their return policy before making a purchase to understand the process. I'll keep that in mind. Are there any tips for finding the best deals and discounts online? Definitely. Signing up for newsletters or following brands on social media can give you access to exclusive promotions and coupon codes.
Comparison shopping can also help you find the best price. That's helpful. I'll make sure to utilize those strategies. Is there anything else I should know about online shopping? It's always a good idea to double check product details, such as size charts and specifications, to ensure you're getting what you expect. Also, be mindful of shipping fees and delivery times. I'll be sure to pay attention to those details. Thank you for sharing your insights and tips on online shopping. Lesson 16, Effective Communication in the Workplace. Hi Anna, I wanted to talk to you about improving our communication skills at work. It's important to have a good rapport with our colleagues and superiors. Any suggestions? Hi John. Absolutely, effective communication is crucial for a productive work environment. One tip is to be prepared before any important discussions or meetings. That's a great point. Being prepared helps us articulate our thoughts clearly. How about active listening? How can we improve that? Active listening involves giving our full attention to the speaker and responding appropriately. We can practice by maintaining eye contact, asking relevant questions, and summarizing what we've heard. I'll keep that in mind. What about nonverbal communication? How can we ensure our body language is positive and engaging? Nonverbal cues like facial expressions and posture can convey a lot. It's important to maintain an open and approachable stance and to be mindful of our facial expressions to show interest and attentiveness. That makes sense. I'll work on being more mindful of my nonverbal communication. How about written communication? Any tips for effective emails or messages? Clear and concise writing is essential. Structuring our emails with a proper introduction, body, and conclusion can help convey our message effectively. Proofreading for grammar and spelling errors is also important. I'll pay more attention to the structure and clarity of my written communication. Are there any challenges we might face in workplace communication? Misunderstandings can occur due to different communication styles and cultural backgrounds. It's important to be patient, ask for clarification when needed, and be open to different perspectives. I'll keep that in mind. Effective communication is a continuous learning process. Thank you for sharing these valuable insights. Lesson 17, Exploring Thailand. Hi Anna, I've heard great things about Thailand. What's the weather like there? I'm curious to know. Hi John. Thailand has a tropical climate, so it's generally warm and humid throughout the year. However, there are variations depending on the region and the time of year you visit. That's interesting. Are there specific seasons in Thailand, or is it mostly the same all year round? Thailand has three main seasons, the hot season, the rainy season, and the cool season. The hot season is from March to May, the rainy season is from June to October, and the cool season is from November to February. It's good to know the different seasons. What can I expect during the hot season in terms of temperature and weather conditions? 
During the hot season, temperatures can reach around 35 to 40 degrees Celsius, 95 to 104 degrees Fahrenheit. It's generally sunny with occasional thunderstorms or brief showers. That sounds quite hot. How about the rainy season? Is it constant rain throughout the day? In the rainy season, you can expect frequent rain showers, often in the afternoon or evening. It's a good idea to carry an umbrella or raincoat. Despite the rain, there are still plenty of sunny days. I'll make sure to pack accordingly if I visit during the rainy season. What about the cool season? Is it significantly cooler compared to the other seasons? Yes, the cool season brings milder temperatures ranging from 20 to 30 degrees Celsius, 68 to 86 degrees Fahrenheit. It's generally sunny and less humid, making it a popular time for tourists to visit. That sounds like a pleasant time to explore Thailand. Are there any specific regions or cities you recommend visiting? Bangkok, the capital city, offers a vibrant mix of culture, food, and attractions. Chiang Mai in the north is known for its temples and beautiful landscapes. Phuket and Krabi in the south offer stunning beaches and islands. Those places sound amazing. I'll definitely consider visiting them. Thank you for sharing insights about Thailand's weather and attractions. Lesson 18, Traveling Essentials Hi Anna, I need some advice on traveling. Can I bring liquids or sharp objects in my carry-on bag? Hi John. When it comes to liquids, you are allowed to bring small containers of liquids, gels, and aerosols in your carry-on bag. However, each container should not exceed 100 milliliters, 3.4 ounces, and all containers must fit in a clear, resealable plastic bag. That's good to know. What about sharp objects like scissors for pocket knives? Generally, sharp objects like scissors with blades shorter than 6 cm, 2.36 inches, and pocket knives with blades shorter than 6 cm, 2.36 inches, are allowed in checked baggage, but not in your carry-on bag. It's important to check the airline's specific guidelines. I'll be sure to pack sharp objects in my checked baggage to avoid any issues. Can I get my boarding pass online or do I have to collect it at the check-in counter? Many airlines offer online check-in services where you can obtain your boarding pass electronically. You can either print it at home or use a mobile boarding pass on your smartphone. It's convenient and saves time at the airport. That's great! I prefer the convenience of online check-in. Are there any restrictions on the size and weight of carry-on luggage? Airlines have specific regulations regarding the size and weight of carry-on luggage. It's generally recommended to check the airline's website for the most accurate information. As a general guideline, carry-on bags should fit in the overhead bin or under the seat in front of you. I'll make sure to check the airline's guidelines to avoid any issues with my carry-on luggage. What about prohibited items? Are there any common items that I should not pack? Yes, there are certain items that are not allowed in either carry-on or checked baggage. These include flammable materials, explosives, firearms, and certain chemicals. 
it's important to review the list of prohibited items provided by the airline or relevant authorities. I'll definitely go through the list of prohibited items to ensure I don't pack anything that's not allowed. Thank you for your help. Lesson 19, Making it Actionable Hi Anna, I've been thinking about setting goals, but sometimes it feels overwhelming. Any tips on making it more actionable and less subjective? Hi John. Absolutely, setting actionable goals is important for making progress. One way is to break down your goals into smaller, measurable tasks. This way, you can track your progress more effectively. That makes sense. So, instead of having a vague goal like get healthier, I should focus on specific actions? Exactly. Instead of a broad goal, you can set specific actions like exercise three times a week or eat a balanced meal every day. This way, you have clear steps to follow. That way, it becomes more tangible and easier to track. What about the subjective aspect of goal setting? How can I make it less subjective? A good approach is to make your goals more objective by attaching numbers or specific criteria. For example, instead of saying improve my communication skills, you can set a goal to deliver a presentation without notes. That's a great idea. By adding specific criteria, I can measure my progress and know when I've achieved the goal. Are there any other strategies to make goals more actionable? Another strategy is to set deadlines for your goals. Deadlines create a sense of urgency and help you stay motivated. Breaking down your goals into smaller deadlines can also make them more manageable. Setting deadlines sounds effective. It adds a sense of accountability and helps maintain focus. I'll definitely incorporate that into my goal setting process. Thank you. You're welcome. Remember, it's important to regularly review and adjust your goals as needed. Flexibility is key in achieving success. Absolutely, being flexible allows for adaptation along the way. Here's to setting actionable goals and making progress towards our aspirations. Lesson 20, Adapting Strategies Hi Anna, I've been thinking about our business strategies. Should we adapt them considering it's a growing market? Hi John. Absolutely, in a dynamic and growing market, it's crucial to adapt our strategies to stay competitive. We need to continually assess and adjust our approach. That's true. So, how can we determine if our current strategies are still effective? One way is to analyze market trends and customer feedback. By monitoring the market and listening to our customers, we can identify areas where our strategies may need adjustments. That makes sense. It's important to stay in tune with the market and understand our customers' evolving needs. What are some indicators that signal the need for strategy adaptation? Declining sales, increased competition, or shifts in customer preferences are potential indicators. These signs suggest that our current strategies might not be as effective as before. I agree. We need to be proactive and responsive to these indicators. 
So, once we identify the need for adaptation, what steps should we take? First, we should conduct a thorough analysis of our current strategies and their outcomes. Then, we can identify areas for improvement and develop new approaches to address the changing market dynamics. That sounds like a comprehensive approach. We should take a data-driven approach to understand what works and what doesn't. Are there any risks involved in adapting strategies? Yes, there are risks, such as potential disruption and the need for additional resources. However, the risks of not adapting and falling behind in a growing market can be even greater. That's a valid point. The risks of stagnation outweigh the risks of adaptation. Let's embrace the opportunity to evolve and grow. Thank you for your insights. Lesson 21, Retail Therapy, Shopping for Clothes. Hi Anna, have you done your shopping? Yes, I bought some clothes. Hi John. That's great. Shopping for clothes can be fun. What did you get? I bought a stylish pair of jeans and a couple of trendy t-shirts. I wanted to update my wardrobe. Nice choices. It's always good to have versatile pieces like jeans and t-shirts that can be easily mixed and matched. Absolutely. I wanted something comfortable yet fashionable. Did you buy anything exciting? Yes, I found a beautiful dress for a special occasion and a cozy sweater for the upcoming colder months. That sounds wonderful. It's always nice to have a mix of dressy and casual items in your wardrobe. Definitely. Variety is key, so you're prepared for different occasions and weather conditions. I agree. Plus, having clothes that make you feel confident and comfortable is important. Absolutely. When you feel good in what you wear, it boosts your self-esteem and overall mood. That's so true. It's amazing how clothes can impact our emotions and how we present ourselves to the world. Indeed. Fashion is a form of self-expression. It allows us to showcase our personality and style. Definitely. And with the changing seasons, it's a great time to explore new fashion trends and experiment with different looks. Absolutely. It's exciting to see the new collections and find pieces that resonate with your personal style. I couldn't agree more. It's like discovering a new side of yourself through fashion choices. That's the beauty of fashion. It's ever-evolving and allows us to continuously reinvent ourselves. And it's not just about the clothes themselves. It's also about the experience of shopping and discovering hidden gems. You're right. Finding that perfect item or stumbling upon a great deal can be quite exhilarating. It definitely adds to the thrill of shopping. It's like embarking on a treasure hunt. Absolutely. So, are you satisfied with your recent purchases? Did you find everything you were looking for? 
Yes, I'm happy with my purchases. They fit well and align with my personal style. It was a successful shopping trip. That's fantastic to hear. Enjoy wearing your new clothes and rock your updated wardrobe. Thank you. I appreciate your kind words. Here's to feeling stylish and confident in our fashion choices. Lesson 22, Serene Spaces, Creating a Tidy Home. Hi Anna, I had a thought. That's a great idea. A tidy home can bring so much peace and harmony. Hi John. I couldn't agree more. When our surroundings are organized and clutter-free, it positively impacts our well-being. Definitely. It's amazing how a clean and tidy space can contribute to a sense of calm and clarity. Absolutely. It allows us to focus better, reduces stress, and creates a more welcoming environment. That's so true. I've noticed that when my space is tidy, I feel more motivated and productive. It's incredible how our external environment influences our internal state. A tidy home promotes a peaceful mind. Indeed. So, do you have any tips on how to maintain a tidy living space? Of course. One tip is to designate specific places for different items, so everything has its own home. That's a great starting point. Having a designated spot for each item makes it easier to find and put things away. Exactly. It eliminates the need to search for things and prevents clutter from accumulating. I see the value in that. What about organizing storage spaces like closets and cabinets? Good question. One effective way is to group similar items together and use storage bins or labels to keep things organized. That makes sense. Categorizing items and using storage solutions can maximize space and make things easily accessible. Absolutely. It's important to make the most of your storage areas and ensure everything has a place. I'll keep that in mind. What about cleaning routines? Any advice on maintaining a clean home? Regular cleaning routines can make a big difference. Breaking down tasks into manageable chunks and scheduling them helps maintain cleanliness. That's a practical approach. By spreading out the cleaning tasks, it becomes less overwhelming and more manageable. Exactly. Consistency is key. Setting aside specific times for cleaning ensures that it becomes a habit rather than a daunting chore. I agree. It's easier to maintain a tidy home when cleaning becomes a regular part of our routine. Absolutely. And involving the whole family in the cleaning process can make it more efficient and enjoyable. That's a great idea. Sharing responsibilities and making it a team effort fosters a sense of shared ownership and accomplishment. Definitely. Plus, it's a great opportunity to spend quality time together while taking care of the home. I like the idea of turning cleaning into a bonding activity. 
It adds a positive aspect to the process. I'm glad you think so. A clean and organized home not only benefits us individually, but also creates a welcoming space for guests. Indeed. It sets a positive impression and makes others feel comfortable and at ease. Lesson 23, Lifelong Learning, Exploring Courses. Hi Anna, have you taken any courses recently? I'm planning to enroll soon. Hi John. That's fantastic. Continuous learning is always a great idea. What kind of courses are you considering? I'm thinking of enrolling in a photography course. I've always been interested in capturing moments through the lens. That sounds wonderful. Photography is a fantastic way to express creativity and explore the world around us. Absolutely. Plus, learning proper techniques and composition can take my photography skills to the next level. Definitely. It's exciting to enhance your abilities and learn from experienced instructors or professionals in the field. I couldn't agree more. So, have you taken any courses lately? Yes, I recently completed a language course. I wanted to brush up on my conversational skills in a foreign language. That's impressive. Learning a new language opens up doors to different cultures and expands our horizons. Indeed. It's a rewarding experience and allows for better communication with people from diverse backgrounds. I can imagine. Language skills are valuable in both personal and professional settings. Absolutely. It helps build connections, fosters understanding, and can even lead to new opportunities. That's so true. So, when choosing a course, what factors do you consider? One important factor is aligning the course with your interests and goals. It's essential to be passionate about what you're learning. I agree. Having a genuine interest in the subject matter drives motivation and makes the learning experience more enjoyable. Exactly. Additionally, considering the course structure, duration, and flexibility is crucial for fitting it into your schedule. That makes sense. It's important to find a course that accommodates your lifestyle and allows for effective time management. Absolutely. And researching the reputation and credibility of the course provider or institution is also important. I see the value in that. Ensuring that the course is taught by qualified instructors enhances the learning experience. Definitely. You want to learn from experts who can provide valuable insights and guidance. I'll keep those factors in mind when selecting a course. It's important to make an informed decision. Absolutely. And remember, learning is a lifelong journey. It's not limited to formal education, but extends to various experiences. You're right. Learning can happen in different ways, from courses to workshops, books, and even everyday interactions. 
Lesson 24, Wanderlust Adventures, Tips for a Successful Road Trip Hi Anna, I'm planning a road trip soon. Any tips for a successful journey? Hi John. That sounds exciting. Road trips can be a lot of fun. One tip is to plan your route and stops in advance. Good point. Mapping out the journey and knowing where to stop for rest, meals, and attractions is essential. Absolutely. It helps ensure a smooth and enjoyable travel experience without any last-minute surprises. I'll make a note of that. What about packing essentials? Any suggestions on what to bring? Definitely. Pack essentials like snacks, water, a first aid kit, and emergency supplies. Also, don't forget a good playlist. That's important. Staying hydrated and having some snacks on hand can make the trip more comfortable and convenient. Absolutely. And a well-curated playlist adds to the road trip ambience and keeps the spirits high. I agree. Music sets the mood and creates memorable moments along the way. Any other tips for a successful road trip? Another tip is to have a basic understanding of the local traffic rules and regulations of the places you'll be driving through. That's a good point. Familiarizing oneself with the rules ensures a safe and hassle-free journey. Definitely. It's also helpful to have a backup plan in case of unforeseen circumstances, like road closures or detours. I see the value in that. Being prepared for unexpected changes in the route can save time and minimize stress. Absolutely. Additionally, keep some cash on hand for tolls, parking, or any other situations where card payments might not be accepted. That's a practical tip. Having cash as a backup avoids any inconvenience during the trip. Precisely. Lastly, don't forget to enjoy the journey itself. Take breaks, admire the scenery, and create lasting memories. I couldn't agree more. It's not just about reaching the destination but also savoring the moments along the way. Exactly. Road trips offer a unique sense of freedom and adventure. Embrace the experience to the fullest. I'll keep all these tips in mind. Thanks for sharing your wisdom. I'm excited for my upcoming road trip. Lesson 25, Adventure Essentials, Packing for a Trip Hi Anna, I'm getting ready for our upcoming trip. Should we include a first aid kit? Hi John. Absolutely. It's always wise to have a first aid kit handy for any unexpected situations. That makes sense. Safety should be a priority. I'll handle that and make sure it's well stocked. Great. Apart from the first aid kit, what other things should we pack for our adventure? We should consider the weather conditions and pack accordingly. Layered clothing is always a good idea. Definitely. 
layering allows us to adapt to changing temperatures and ensures we stay comfortable throughout the trip. Right. And don't forget essentials like toiletries, sunscreen, and insect repellent for outdoor activities. Good point. Protecting our skin from the sun and insects is crucial for a pleasant experience. Absolutely. Additionally, we should pack some versatile and comfortable footwear for different activities we might engage in. Absolutely. Having the right shoes ensures we can explore and enjoy outdoor adventures without discomfort. I agree. And it's also a good idea to bring a reusable water bottle to stay hydrated on our journey. Definitely. Staying hydrated is essential, and having a reusable bottle helps reduce waste along the way. That's true. Oh, and let's not forget necessary documents like identification, travel insurance, and copies of important information. Absolutely. Keeping our documents organized and accessible ensures a smooth travel experience. Right. We should also pack some snacks and entertainment for the journey, like books or portable games. Good idea. Having snacks and entertainment handy keeps us energized and entertained during long stretches. Exactly. And lastly, let's not forget a camera to capture all the beautiful moments and scenery. Oh, absolutely. A camera helps us preserve memories and share our experiences with others. I'm glad we're on the same page. With all these essentials, our trip will be both enjoyable and safe.